there at the time either. So I guess now it's, I don't know, I need feedback on this. I can tell stories, but this one has got me. Why does it still work? I still haven't worked it out yet as to why people's status is still work. Because it allows you to be yourself. It's still expressism of individual individualism, and it still allows you to be fearless in who you are. And the movie still portrays that to be who you are, and just expression of individualism. That's what the movie gave to me 25 years ago. And it's still today. You're right. Okay. So it doesn't matter who you are, what you do. So you can be yourself. You can be yourself. Yes. Interestingly, the um, I tried to shoot the finale on Air's Rock. All the room. And uh, we got out there and we were knocked back and we were knocked back and we got knocked, knocked back. And uh, eventually I went out there to see the elders privately to say this is a film about, it's not, we're in a minority camp here, this is about celebrating minorities. I'm not looking down at you. And it, it was, um, uh, he was listening, he had a white lawyer with him. And the white lawyer sat with him the entire time and, and he said, this is my piece, I think we're all in the same camp here, we're all reciting for the same thing. It was really interesting. The white boy said, have you finished? <laughs> I said, yeah, I, well, I, I stayed in my case. He said, now get the fuck out of our country. And uh, we go to a fight. And the Alice Springs Hotel, I bet the shit out of me. the shit out of me. We're rolling around on the ground in front of all these tourists. And uh, so we went to King's Canyon instead, which was down the road. But I'll never forget that. Get the fuck out of our country. I was like, oh. <sighs> But that's, a, that's an interesting one, Stefan, because kind of what, what I remember when I first saw the film, what got me and what I think still gets people is there is a sense of urgency in there. Mm -hmm. When there is a lot of representation now of um, lesbian, gay, transgender, intersex people, but a lot of it has kind of, kind of also spilled over into commercial entertainment. Mm -hmm. but the film still maintains, like with all of the playfulness, and there is a sense of urgency there, which I, for the first time, kind of managed to contextualize when you talked about your New Zealand experience, when you basically said this is the moment that movie was born. Did and you see that? Is it, it's pretty clear, isn't it? It's yeah. word for word. Yeah. And that's the heart of the film. There's no other heart when I look at the film. That's the heart of the film. So, yeah. and, and can you kind of, kind of reflect? I mean, I, I know this could go on for, for a long, long time and people would have questions, but I'd just be interested in like, translating that, that experience, that, that initial moment when that caught up with you and you started writing the film, because we, we had a brief chat just about writing um, early when we were out, but how did that then translate into those characters? Because that's still quite a way then to writing about a uh, woman with a man who's a gay man who have a child and those questions of parenting and the complexity of the characters like Tick and Adam and, and all of the other guys in the film. So can you just give us a brief idea of how that whole process of then kind of from that initial experience to then actually writing those characters. I don't know. Characters. I don't know. You can't remember. I can't remember and I want to try to remember. How many days did, I, did, I, did it take me to write the script? Fourteen. Fourteen days. Fourteen days. That's the first draft. And we improvised, we improvised along the way. I don't know where it came. And I won't analyze it as to where it came from or try and you gotta sit down and pull it about it apart in the film that's yeah. it fell out. Yeah. But it must have been a rage. It must have been from that moment of being nineteen year old up to being twenty seven year old. Mm -hmm. Something was obviously stewing and I don't know where it came from. Sometimes don't overthink it. Just to answer your question about why I think I think this film is relevant, I think we talked a lot about the LGBTI community, but I know there's still a lot of silos within the LGBTI community, for example like be honest, I don't have any friends that are lesbians, for example. So there's, there's even between the characters, there's still those silos. I think one of the things that your film does fantastically is is bring together the entire community on, on one screen. So from, from my perspective, I think that's... Is that because of threat? It's saying everyone's been brought together. Why are all those people being brought together? What bring, what, what's the gel? Isolation? I don't know. Throw it out there. Come on, guys. It's, it, it is, it's a really good point. So what is it that gels all those people together? I don't know. Maybe it's the kid, the kid when he's talking to his father and he's accepting and the father finally can accept his own identity in front of the kid. Yeah. I don't know, maybe the ingenuity of the kid. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about education. Education. 
because the kit has been indicated that it is good to be gay. Yeah. It's good to be lesbian, it's good to be different than the normal standard, whatever they call The father was not educated. The father was not educated by that. The father was educated in the old fashioned way that there's a man and a woman. And that is what makes him difficult to accept himself. Yeah. And I think that is what we have still in the society. You know, we are privileged because we live in, in cities. I'll go into the outback in Australia, go into the villages here in the mountains and whatever. It is still the same. A drag queen will still be seen as a drag queen and some pervert or whatever, you know. I, politicians will still uh, compare pedophiles with uh, homosexuals, yeah. and that is what is what is still. It's a, a question of education, and I think I think <coughs> today we were very much uh, of avant la lettre, like we say in French, mm -hmm. is because I think 25 years ago education of children was not like that. Yeah. Now education, my uh, my godson. You know, you're when you up. You've only got three minutes. Yeah, yeah I know. My godson, my, godson, <laughs> my godson, for example, no, you can have that. My godson, for example, I was uh, surprised that he is defending gay rights yeah. and he is yeah. only 10 years old. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I think Stefan, like, well, it's something that flows so from that. My godson, my godson is now only six. He spins around and it's like this. It's like he tells his friends that it's great money. He said, they sleep in the same bed. Okay. Not as a matter of pride now. That's the that's the that's the that's the that's the and it's like, well, that's a big shift. Be proud of it, first. And another moment, of course, is 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 um, violence. I mean, that that inherent violence of of. Is that your legacy? Well, look, it's 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 one of the things that when when we talked about when you asked me what what do you think were the two movies that influenced, yeah. like kind of in that series of influence, it's like my first my first intuitive answer was Wake in Fright. Yeah. Because it is another outback film, and I think there is similarities in terms of like when, when in the film like Cooper Pee, for instance, or also like Broken Hill, you cannot stop but thinking of the resonance of It's true, it's twice. true, however. Yeah. What, what works about the film as is, is that I didn't go there, okay, great moment, San Francisco Film uh, Festival, before we screened in Cannes, 48 hours before, fluking time, the film bombed. At the, San, at the Castro, at the San Francisco Gannos Black Film Festival, it bombed. They started booing. And I'll never forget that. I got up in front of this audience and said, wow, I've got a dog on my hand here. This has just failed. And you have to do a Q&A like this. And the question was, and they said, well, they said, you avoided the issues. You avoided it. There was, and I said, okay, what's that? They said, there were no men kissing. AIDS, you just, what, you know, AIDS, and somebody stood up and said, where's the HIV story through line? And then they went, they just kept coming at me with politics. They said, there was one big up scene, there was one scene, beyond that, you just stepped over the top of it, and they said, you're, you know, it's, it's actually shameful. And I, it was a great moment, actually, and I'll give myself points for that. I grabbed a mic in front of 2,000 people, and I'm 27, and said, you know what, there's a certain film you're talking about that you might, might want to make, and you go and fucking make it. <laughs> I'm not making that film. I said, this film's for everybody. Mm. You're right, it's there. You know, HIV AIDS is, is there in a microsecond. It's on the side of a bus and it's gone. It's acknowledged, move on. I do not want to bang you over the head. I didn't want the violence. It's funny that you say it's still there. I had to do it. That scene was tough, but I never went back there again. Because what's the point? I said, otherwise it just will become... Uh, it will become a heavy edge, and so, and then it was funny to hear people say years later I didn't, but because I didn't, it's kind of why the film worked. Yeah. And I felt very strongly about it. So I think that makes it stronger because it's not overemphasized, but it's there and it's very pointed and it kind of sticks with it. Yeah, yeah. Little, little uh, trivia question, there you go. Uh, pre digital, this is how films were made, ready. <laughs> we had, you shoot films out of sequence, you just do. And in Hollywood, that, there would have been 10 buses. We had one. <laughs> and somewhere in the middle of the film, I have to write the words, AIDS fuckers go home. Mm. But I needed it silver. And therefore, because that was written on there, was my excuse, right, as I did, paint the bus pink. That gets over it, so the bus becomes a pink piece to cover up, so we go into the pink bus, yada, yada, yada. We're shooting out of sequence. 
if it's sometimes I need a silver bus, sometimes I need a pink bus. How did I do it? Turn it around. Turn it around? Well, just have like half of it. Like Good girl. One half is pink, the other half is silver. <laughs> that bus is going one way silver, it goes the other way pink. Thank you so much. There you go. Well done. <laughs> The most fascinating thing about it is that there's a whole younger generation who will never see a film, that, who wants to see a film from the olden days. That's how it is. Fair enough, we're all old people. Um, but they see the stage show, which has been, you know, which is amazing to rework at the stage, it's been really interesting. But then they see the stage show, and immediately people have no interest in the film or going out and seeing the film again. So I'm having a fourth generation now saying, the film, oh God, what is this film? Where did this come from? And it's so, it, but they're still at an age going, at 15 or 14, going, it's amazing. And you think, okay, move on. But they haven't, so something, yeah, something's resonated. Mm -hmm. Why did you portray the young Aborigines as the only community that accepted those people? Why did I portray the Aborigines as the only, because the only, as the only community, uh, they're all uh, minorities. And out there, there's, they are the only minority out there. There's nothing out there, and they are absolutely in the right. Question? So, man, that was a joke, sorry, you drove right into that. <laughs> um, I've always wondered, how, do you, how did you arrive at the idea to cast Terrence Stamp? Yeah, I wanted to ask the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> how did we end up with Stamp? Stamp was voted most uh, uh, prettiest human being I think 17 times in the 60s. He was, he was For a very good reason. But there's a reason, yeah. Like, I had lunch with him only four weeks ago. We we're in the Ivy in London. And he's, you know, he's getting on. Tell us getting on now. Those eyes are just cobalt blue. Mm. They're just cobalt. They're the most frightening colour. And he said, Well, oh, he's good enough. I said, What? He said, Check out where he's coming in. I forgot who walked in. It was some. It was, um, Mike Douglas' wife, what's his name? Catherine Zeta Jones. Catherine Zeta Jones walked in and he said, watch this. And he just puts the eyes on her and he just started to stare at her. She was knocking over a glass. <laughs> <laughs> She's just smashing things. And I said, stop it, Terrence. She said, no, no, governor, it's too much fun. <laughs> we offered the script to, first one up there was, uh, straight off the bat was, um, don't laugh, but it was Tony Curtis. Oh. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of it's funny already, isn't it? Some like it, heart goes round in a circle. It was kind of brilliant, and he kind of said, yeah, I'll do it. He said, well, I might as well be nice. My career really took off when I was in a dress. I might as well end when I was in a dress. But the new Mrs. Curtis, who was known, Mrs. Curtis number 37, stopped him at the last minute. <laughs> Which was a real shame. Tim Curry was the next one I went for. Oh, wow. And Tim just said, I just can't do it. I've just spent my career getting out of the stilettos. You're going to put me back in the stilettos again. I said, Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And he absolutely wouldn't do it. Then we just got desperate. We just, just was sending it to anyone because we needed it. And then Stan came up one day and said, He's never going to do it. I mean, what's the point? He's like, He's, he's also forgotten. At the point we've been forgotten. And uh, he uh, tells the story quite well. He ran into his agent. He just finished a film called Alien Nation, where he was dressed as a, as a bad guy and sits Superman, so he'd been playing bad guys his entire life and realised that's what happens to English actors at a certain age, so he turned into bad guys. So he walked into his agent she, and he said, I quit, I'm over, I'm, I'm done. And uh, she said, Okay, why don't you go up with a bang and put the script down in front of him? He said, I was so at a loss of what else to do, I did it in a strange way of desperation. And that scene in the shake your groove thing in the pub, he completely fell apart. He fell apart. I said, what's the matter? He said, I have, I'm the sexiest man alive, look at me. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and he did it, and that night was, we had a quite a few problems up to that night, and that night he just said, I, I can do this, I'm fine, I'm, this is all, you know, they were extras, they're like, well, he said, I can do it. And, uh, and he's really funny now, he's worked with Fellini, he's worked with Antoniani, they look at it, he said, and governor, he says, God, I've this body of work that I've done all anyone wants to talk about. 
guys fucking push it up. It's kind of gorgeous. Look, it's, it's, it's funny because I wanted to ask the same question because I've fancied this idea for the last like, 20 years that it's like the Pasolini collection. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I can't help myself by looking at Bernadette on the one side and on in, like uh, Karen Stamp in Pasolini's Teorema. Yeah. On the yeah. other, and, and yeah. this is like the whole spectrum of of this amazing like physicality and of, of his. So it's like two ends of the same weird twisted <laughs> story, which is kind of works and even if it's just in my head I don't mind but thank you so much for all of that anyway yeah yeah, yeah. the one good thing about Tell's performance as well like he was frightened about who he wanted to be he was very nervous all the way through it he did the entire performance he did most of it like a bad um, South Park character this is how ladies fall. <laughs> you know, a lady. He said, "No, I'm a lady." Um, so he had to let him do that for quite some time until he found himself halfway through, which is just to relax. And then he just started being himself. And then we had to ADR replace all the.